Hey folks, this is Bardic Dragoon, and welcome back to another fighting game thing. Because apparently a lot of you guys like this, or at least a lot of people watched it, so that's my best metric for that. Oh, that and comments and thumbs up, I suppose, but there was a, lot, there was a decent number of those too. So, yeah. Anyway, that said, I also enjoy this game, so why not do some more of this? Plus, with some things that were stated and pointed out in the comments, uh, feels like there should at least be a little bit of, you know, clarification uh, or, you know, correction on things that I said. For example, I mentioned uh, during the match footage in the previous one that Arizona actually has this thing where they can extend their super by burning another uh, super meter. That's actually something that all characters can do, and it's actually kind of interesting because all characters' super commands are all the same. Your standard super is quarter circle forward and two buttons. And, oh, it's a long range super, so I suppose it could still work here, but I want to use it from close range. Uh, your character also has, if the super hits before it's over, which I did not time that well, that was stupid talking, but if the super hits and before the animation ends, you can use an extension. Coincidentally, with Oleander, well, say hi to Fred. Fred is the demon that lives inside Oleander's book. You can perform various attacks with him by, uh, basically you can issue, he has a couple of attacks you can use using the directional buttons plus magic. Coincidentally, that also brings us to the second thing I wanted to mention here. Infinite Fred Timer. You notice Fred just kind of disappeared on us after a while. Well. Yeah, he's on a timer. Also, the demon's name is Fred. That just amuses me. I don't know why. But yeah, it's kind of interesting because you can do stuff like that. You can do stuff like that. He doesn't jump, so all of his attacks stay the same as if you were grounded. He only has a few of them. One of which, I mean, it is a game still in development, so you won't be aware of that, but I'm pretty sure they haven't added the hitbox to that. Feels like that should be doing something. And, well, as proof of concept that every character has this. So apparently to control the second character in training mode, you basically that. Crap. <laughs> Usually I turn my phone off when I record this stuff. Yay for that. Moogle mail. Anyway. Uh, as I was saying, proof of concept. Prom here, who, yeah. Apparently controlling the second character in training mode is basically you have to set up a second controller. Um, down my keyboard, so that that's great. I haven't even properly set it up to be more comfortable for me, so let's see how this turns out. By the way, apparently different characters have different movement options, whereas Oleander has a proper double jump. Her second jump lowers her descent, because yeah, you have jump. Then her pompadour there just inflates and she floats for some reason. This character is weird. But yeah. Okay, the buttons are what I think they are. Okay. So, for example, her super. The whole thing is she's basically a dog sheep. The sheep in this world, for some reason, even though all carnivores have been banished from the world, that's kind of the whole storyline. Uh, for some reason, they have little sheep dogs that they take care of and are part of their society. And yeah, her that's actually her whole playstyle. Where's the magic button? Oh, that's my attack. What the heck's that doing on a keyboard? Yeah, whatever. But yeah. Because her whole thing with her magic meter is that she can summon little puppies. I mean, she has that one that's there all the time that interacts with certain attacks of hers. Mostly her heavy attacks, I believe. Because everything else involves her cowering in fear. Yeah, there we go. But she can actually summon other up to three other dogs. Noted, she's got three magic stocks there. So one for well, I think some dog one of the dogs costs multiple stocks, but I, I honestly don't remember. I don't. I really haven't come across Pom too much, and I don't. I've just never felt the interest to play the character. But as I was saying, so her super, she just summons a bunch of dogs. With her extension, well. Okay, I think you get this 
to work properly. I've been using it. I didn't hit magic, did I? Did... I have no idea. Anyway. Oh, that's right, yeah. Z is magic. You can then use that to control them or... I think... I don't know. Anyway. Try this again with her super. But yeah, you notice at the end you've got that big dog. And I can't get it because I didn't bother setting my keyboard properly. But yeah, her super lets her summon the big dog and use that in battle like the rest of her dogs. Kind of cool. That being said, uh, I don't really have much else to say here. So uh, I guess we'll just jump right into the actual match footage here. I was hoping I could launch that and go into a better combo, but whatever. Let's get into the match footage here, folks. Uh, see you on the other side. Alright, so. Guys, well, jumping into the match footage here. And, appropriately enough, with Palm in the uh, well, intro segment there, that's who our first opponent is here. And. Honestly, Palm is. Like I said, it's a character I never really just had much interest in, outside of the fact they're just so adorably meek, and that's cool, I guess. It's amusing, if nothing else. I might just be a twisted uh, individual, though, so you know, hold on that. Anyway, uh, that being said, yeah, Palm is very... This, this is a match where I should spend a lot of time away from my opponent and keeping them away. So, that's not... I didn't get that. I didn't get that match in this video. I ended up recording a lot more matches than I needed. Like, like I said, I enjoy this game. I don't know. Like, I always like fighting games, but oftentimes it feels like one of those I like them in concept. But something about this just clicks with me. I, I, I don't know why. Anyway, uh, but yeah, Oleander might not be the uh, zoning character I was thinking they were, or at least you know not the main zoner in the cast. But yeah, because. Once, I think this is actually kind of the first moment where we get to see, well, actually not because I'm low enough on health that they really don't even need to do a full run in and just wreck my shit combo, so, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, because I seem to be doing best here, and I actually ended up, I think actually with the same person, but another, that same evening where I was recording, like I said, I recorded a lot of matches, and depending on how lazy or not lazy I am, I might do more than one episode this week. But I am totally lazy, so don't don't bet on it. Anyway, no, oh, there, there we go. And yeah, I don't know what that attack is that they open with there, but that has a lot of stagger on it. But they don't use anything for it. I feel like there might be something they could be doing better with it. But again, I know next to nothing about Palm. Also, I just realized now, though, as obvious as it is, of course there's a black palette for the sheep character. Because why not? And, yeah, I need to work on my inputs a little bit there. Whenever I'm doing that, just out of nowhere, just kind of standing far away from the opponent, doing that, the upward book swing, which is her standing heavy, that's me trying to go for a heavy fireball and somehow missing the input. Don't know how. The other thing you'll see a lot is uh, standing forward heavy, which is where she turns around and summons a giant tentacle out of the book and just slams into the ground. You'll see that one a lot, and that's kind of the same thing. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with that quarter circle forward, particularly on the heavy. I think I do it a lot on the other ones, but since I tend to kind of start out of nowhere with, you know, trying to play fireball game with the heavy, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I said it last time, I'm going, to, I'm going to probably keep saying this whenever I'm watching and looking over the footage here. The animation in this are just great and they're just fucking adorable. There we go, yeah. I don't even, maybe I'm thinking of the second match with the Palm player. Which is weird, because I remember at the moment feeling I did better than I did in this match, but... This actually, especially the second round, came down pretty close. Yeah, whatever. That, that's in the, in the further match footage, so you guys will probably see it in another video, or not, I don't know. They, like, update it, and then, you know, I'll probably go with the newest version, rather than using footage from the old version. And... 
This is the perfect representation that I have a lot to learn here. If nothing else, the combos that are being done here with, like, I was figuring, you know, I mean, you got the fireball, there's a zoning character, but... I mean, it is, I guess, very much kind of an anime fighter style of game, so, you know, lengthy combos kind of make sense. But, yeah, I wouldn't have thought Oleander had that in her. As it looking at it, it does make a certain amount of sense, with the exception of... I mean, they use this, that same combo a lot, so I'm pretty sure they'll pull it off again. But you'll notice, after they do the air part, they'll do, and I think it's... Yeah, oh, no, it's not... Because, yeah, if you look here, and once it's in the air, it's medium, fire, or medium, then a fireball. And then they seem to do a he or forward heavy or down heavy, I forget which one it is, but basically they slam back to the ground, and they come down and forward light, which I thought was kind of an anti-air move, just with the way when you're training the hitboxes look, that would have my first guess, but from playing, I think with Oleander, maybe her crouching uh, medium might be a better hand in the air, I don't know. Yeah, no, they do do it here. And yeah, that's something that's, that lets them to do a reset to just a... Well, maybe not reset isn't the right word. That's the thing, like, I'm trying to talk like I know what I'm doing, but there's also just certain basic fighting game lingo that I don't... Like, I, I have a sense what it could be, but I don't actually know what these words that I'm saying mean sometimes. So, you know, that's cool. But yeah, I just... I would never figure that, because the hitbox is mostly above. It's... Well, yeah, that one would like... Her hair just kind of freaks out. I, the, when you look at the hitbox in training mode, well, at least last time I went to training mode with the hitbox is on, that seems to mostly hit above, so the fact that it, you know, when you're knocked to the ground, hits you up, like, I don't know, maybe it's one of those, I should, I could guard there and I shouldn't be, I don't know. Either way, I just got myself wrecked in the mirror match, so that's fun. That said, uh, something we were familiar to seeing from the last video, Arizona. Why didn't I realize that, of course, you would have a Holstein patterned uh, palette? Duh. <laughs> and I think this actually thing might be it's either this or the next one are the only matches that I win in this one. Because it's only four matches this time. With the fighting game things, I'm trying to keep them to about 15 to 20 minutes in length. I'm not trying to do super lengthy things here. Mostly because it makes my life a bit easier on getting recording stuff in. But I think I probably explained it, though I've deleted all the old fighting game things off the channel. Wasn't really happy with them. Not 100% happy with these. I have like, more things I want to incorporate, but it's kind of like I said with the last video. I have exclusive access to play this, and I'm going to see if I can do anything useful with that. Plus, I'm just having fun with the game. I don't know why I did that. That said, apparently the uh, I, I, apparently the rope has, or at least it seems like, kind of has a dull seam hitbox where the stretchy limbs actually can hit the opponent. That was actually kind of creative, but then again, or no, but this I think it might be the next match, or maybe one of the other ones that I didn't put into here. Having some fun with the teleport and the fi and that really slow uh, light fireball. Like it seems like an obvious thing, and it didn't work as well as it seemed as it probably could have. It's kind of an obvious and predictable thing, but still had some fun with that. And just let's play some keep away. Kind of the one thing with uh, Oleander is she doesn't have like you know kind of the zoning thing. Like okay, she got the fireball, but she's kind of missing the something to kind of okay when they jump over the fireball and come in. She doesn't really have at least as far as like really powerful. I mean, obviously she has. Like I said, uh, forward light and crouching medium seem to be decent anti airs. But nothing quite like in the vein of, you know, your classic, I guess, I don't know, I guess you wouldn't really consider kind of that Shoto uh, character archetype. I keep going for regular Fireball there, I'm pretty sure is what I was going for when I'm doing the super, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting, it, it's one of my main weaknesses in fighting games. Mid-combo, I get mashy and make mistakes. Anyway, what can I say, I'm kind of a high strong person, it happens. Uh, but yeah, uh, what was I saying? But yeah, didn't really have anything that kind of works for the okay, so they jumped over the fireball, what do you do now? Then again, like we saw with that mirror match, and like I said, I think these are also the matches I didn't actually uh, add in, or even a few that I didn't record. Uh, or yeah, just having fun with Oleander, getting in rank, like, uh, maybe more so than the fireball and kind of zoning, I think maybe your teleport is kind of where it's at. 
maybe. I, I don't know. I'm still figuring this out, and I'm not very good at fighting games, so I'll probably be figuring it out for uh, quite a while. By the way, I love the fact that her book... Like, I mean, if you do any attacks that use the book, it'll instantly teleport. But if you if you if the book is knocked away from you, and you aren't using the book-based attacks, the book will just kind of slowly crawl itself back to you. That Little details like that amuse me. And here's something. A video of all kinds of new, you know, characters we didn't get to see last time. Paprika! I hope this is the one I'm thinking it is that just has the brilliantly visualized uh, finale, or the brilliantly visualized finale of the match. Because, yeah, you notice uh, Paprika's attacks are kind of weird. She's like, you know, one of her crouching attacks there is she just leans her head forward and licks you. Something weird. <laughs> Then again, she's hyperactive and weird, so that's, I, I suppose, the point. Uh, anyway. That being said... Yeah, I clearly need to get a cord in there. But yeah, her... Well, she has, uh, like most of your... Of course, you have your normal, your forward grab and your, uh, backward grab. Or... Yeah, I guess that... I don't know, I feel like it's probably better words for it or more technical ones, but... I, I imagine you guys know what I'm talking about. And yeah, hers are weird. Her backward grab, or at least I know she has a grab, which that kind of seems to hug you and you just kind of pop out and fly away. <laughs> and then her, one of her grabs is she basically kind of kisses you and then you fall over. That's a great way to end a match, isn't it? Actually, yeah, I think this is it. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Kiss, fall over, and uh, that that uh, knock down on the back po uh, expression that I love so much. Just kiss, knock down, and just that I hate everything glare. I, I, I love it. <laughs> but yeah, Paprika is a weird character. She actually has some charge moves in her arsenal. It's actually probably the character I know the least about. Simply because of the fact that with no move list and the fact that I... Unless I know what I'm doing and, like, trying to do a thing. Yeah, there's that other grab I was talking about. I don't know if that's one of her normals, like a command grab or what, but there's that. Anyway. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. But, yeah, because, like, charge moves, unless I know specifically what I'm going for, uh, I'm not very good with charge move inputs, so... I, I'm, th I'm glad that her super is, like I said, uh... Or, is that in the opening or the closing section? Is that that? Whatever. Uh, supers are pretty much universal command, or all universal command, quarter circle 2 plus 2 buttons for the normal, uh, and then you can do the extension with quarter circle back plus 2 buttons during the uh, initial attack that hits. Uh, but yeah. So I do appreciate that rather than her having, you know. So, see you on the other side, folks. Hey there again, folks. So, hope you enjoyed those matches. Uh, so, just kind of give better proof as well, or give a better example, not using my keyboard to control, but my actual uh, arcade stick thing here. I'm always reluctant to call it that since it doesn't actually have a stick on it, but whatever. But yeah, better proof of cons of what I meant with palm, as well as a slight correction. It's quarter circle plus a button allows her to summon dogs. And since in training mode I have infinite magic turned on, let's see if we can get the game to crash. <laughs> Just summoning endless hordes of dogs. <laughs> and then yeah, you can then control them. Using the uh, magic button plus directions. And yeah, like I said, normally she can only summon three of them, or I believe it's three. I know it's like basically it's limited by her magic. I just don't remember if each dog takes an individual stock or not. I'm serious about trying to crash the game here. I, I, I am in a beta after all, right? You're supposed to do things like that? Actually, I'll probably do that on my own time. But, if you do her super, of course you get the swarm of dogs and that big dog at the end. So if you do that before the big dog hits, he doesn't attack. Uh, 
But you now have control of the big dog. And like most of our other dogs, it does have limitations. I'm not sure the limits of the dogs, like I said. I've never felt much need to uh, use Palm. Like, she has some funny animations just because she's just a nervous wreck. Because <laughs> her medium attack, she's just like, oh my god, I must hide myself! That, that amuses me. I don't know. I'm genuinely curious if I can crash the game, and what will happen if I do crash the game while recording? No! So, I guess there is a hard limit to the number of dogs. I that I hit a button and made them attack or dismiss them or something. Anyway! So, yeah, I'll probably be seeing more of this in the future. I, I'm enjoying this game, and apparently you guys are too, if the numbers are anything, are anything to go by. But, yeah! Until next time, as always, later folks.